Okay, good. Got it. Okay, got it. Uh, good evening. Uh, this is the Tuesday, December 6, 2022, uh, New Canaan Police Department um, special meeting. Um, uh, what I would like to have, because we're going to be interviewing uh, candidates for positions in the department, I would like to go into executive session. So could we have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. She gave a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So we'll go into executive session and then we'll come out um, at the end of the process. Thank you. Okay, one second. Yep. Okay. Um, all right, we, um, the police commission is now coming out of executive session. We have made, uh, we've gone through a number of interviews and we've made a decision. Um, welcome Mike and uh, welcome Josh. Um, let's have that motion first. And if you all have questions afterwards, we'd like to address them, all right? So um, any motion coming out of this um, session of executive session? I move that the uh, Duquesne Police Commission approve the hiring of Nicholas Ogoglia as a police officer, subject to completion of his final medical uh, approval and that we approve the hiring of Erica Mori as a police officer, in her case, subject to uh, completion of her medical and other personnel tests and to approval by the requisite town bodies, finance and HR uh, to the hiring of a second for a second position. Okay, second. Kama? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. That's unanimous. Okay, great. Excellent. Uh, Mike, Josh, any questions? I know you guys just came on. Um, I hope you weren't waiting too long. Yeah, Paul, do you want me to I'll screen share? I'll jump into the budget. So yeah. The hiring. Mike. Are you muted, yes. Mike? Hi. I'm here, I'll mute now. Ah, now I see you. Jenna Brown disabled. Screen share. Oh, can hear me. Hey guys. Uh, one second. Okay. Want me to press that? Yeah. Nope, it's not, it's not, it's not touch. Oh, it's not touch? It's a mouse. Oh, never mind the mouse, okay. <laughs> Okay, so hey Mike. Yes, so this this will help us tremendously getting um, back to our complement of 47. And then we've got a, a couple more people that will be retiring in June and July of this year and, and another third possibly as well. So this will this will go a long way in answering that need. Um, two great candidates. I'm really glad uh, hopefully they they accept and and, and get on board, it'd be terrific. So. Um, any other business? Chief, wanna, let's go through um, the budget, if you would. You could share your screen now, Leon. Thank you. Let me pull that up too. Got it, I've got mine up here as well, Leon. You can see that, right? Yep, I can see it. And I've got it yes. on my, my okay. laptop here. Okay, so this is our, our FY24 budget presentation. This is a light presentation and compared to what will be done for all the other formal, formal bodies of the town in uh, next year, early next year. But it's a little snapshot of what our asks are. So that's kind of how we uh, we're pretty smart about how we ask for our budget and the way we uh, manage it. Uh, animal control is our responsibility, and uh, we are asking for $10,000 for fence for alternative animal control shelter, which is at the New Canaan Vet. Um, and uh, we try to use our town shelter as much as possible if there were a, uh, a circumstance there where the animals weren't safe to be uh, kept there, we would need to go to that alternative shelter. So that's uh, a $10,000 ask for fence and other installation that's going to make it. Uh, 
qualified by the state to serve as a alternative animal control shelter. Uh, animal control operating budget request is 112132, relatively modest for the work uh, that our animal control officer does. So thanks to her for all her good work, certainly. Leon, what's is there an increase there of just it's just the two percent or so, right? Yeah, I think it's one, one and a half or something. Um, okay. largely salaries and social security. Right. If you could put that in when you this is the presentation you're gonna to give to them, right? To yeah. Board of Finance, right? And oh, no, like, this, this is a, a light one. So the actual presentation will be a lot more in depth. Okay, good. Okay, fine. That's, I will I will put that actual increase yeah, in. the percentage in just because you're going to be asking. Absolutely. Okay, thanks. You're thanks. Welcome. Capital summary uh, fiscal year 24 is a large request, uh, largely due to uh, six vehicles. Um, as we know, Ford's design change has caused some increased equipment costs related to outfitting our vehicles and uh, a recent development declining health of our fleet demands aggressive replacement schedule. Um, so typically, for example, this fiscal year, we have three vehicles all allocated and funded, uh, but unfortunately Ford raised the price of each vehicle by $8,000. So we can't purchase three within the budget that we have. So we're gonna purchase two for this fiscal year and next fiscal year, FY24, our, our request is for six, and that's largely due to uh, the declining health and downtime and repairs uh, of our fleet. And I have a, a slide or two ahead that'll uh, go in more detail about that. And also, we're asking for taser replacements, uh, some mobile data terminal replacements, bulletproof vests, uh, fixed LPRs. That's a reoccurring lease. And uh, we recently uh, received approval to move forward with the LPRs. And those should be starting installations over the next few weeks. And once those are in place, um, we're, we're predicting they're going to be a, a critical tool for us to uh, mitigate crime and investigate crimes in, in our town. So I'm very excited about that. And thanks to everyone who approved that, that initiative. The fibrillators, uh, where we, where we, which we use to save people's lives that have uh, heart issues. Those are approaching the end of life, so to speak, and those need to be replaced. And dispatch backup ready, just another capital item that we need to uh, replace because it's it's ended in life. Uh, so vehicles, a little more in depth. Our highway department has identified at least eight frontline vehicles that should be replaced uh, due to an aging fleet, supply chain delays, dealership scheduling challenges, complicated repairs, our frontline patrol vehicles can be out of service for weeks at a time. So that's an unusual development we've never seen before. And right now we have two vehicles that have been down for many weeks. And uh, therefore this is uh, why there's an urgent need for us to get ahead of that and uh, in inject six new vehicles into our fleet to make sure that it's as healthy as possible. And this is our frontline vehicles that are serving patrol. So as I mentioned previously, FY23 is two vehicles, um, but the three authorized uh, couldn't be accomplished due to the increase. And FY24, six, one-time catch up to stabilize our fleet. And keep in mind, we've uh, had a 32323 three replacement schedule for about the past decade or so. Um, so it's unusual for us to uh, ask for so many vehicles, but there's a real need this fiscal year to do that. And we're also proposing to increase our replacement schedule uh, to four, three, four, three, four over the course of five years. And uh, that we believe will help stabilize things. And the reality is, although the, uh, the Ford Interceptor SUVs are very, uh, a, a good vehicle, um, they are just not proving to be as reliable as the Crown Victorias that we had for, for decades. And uh, we're facing some challenges related to that. So that's uh, connected back to that six vehicle placement request. You can see our benchmarking that we kind of uh, show as comparable agencies uh, in comparison to a Darien, which is similar to us, or a Wilton. Um, they do have much more aggressive vehicle replacement schedules. And I think uh, as a result of our pretty conservative replacement schedule, that's where we, where we are where we are. And that's why we need to enhance that to six for the next fiscal year. And that is being the replacements and the increased replacements are being 
supported by our highway department who saw the maintenance and on our vehicles. So that's that's why uh, that's a critical need this for this coming fiscal year. Uh, more about our vehicles, as we know, they respond to all 911 calls. There are offices for our vehicle, for our officers, and uh, they're considered considered essential emergency equipment. And the goal is to replace our frontline patrol vehicles that have high mileage and high repair costs um, with more reliable and safer vehicles. And the move to Ford SUVs, which are more reliable, but are proving recently to be not as reliable as Crown Victoria's, are safer in all weather conditions. And industry best practices are replaced at 80 to 85,000 miles. But uh, a, kind of a, a interject with that is we don't necessarily take those vehicles out of our fleet at 85, 85,000 miles. We uh, make them as a replacement vehicle or a backup vehicle, and they're just not frontline vehicles. But typically, we don't replace those vehicles and take them out of our fleet until they're more than 100,000 miles. So they're very well used by that point. Hey, Chief, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, just on that, I know we've had this same questions over time, but uh, once they hit the 100,000 mark, do we, like, does the town sell them? Do we, like, send them to, you know, Tiger's Department or try to repurpose them? Because I think that always helps kind of grease the wheels, so to speak, in terms of any costs that, you know, there's cost savings down the road, even when a car has 100,000 miles on it for the town, or do we just sell them on the market? Yeah, well, typically, depending on the vehicle and its condition, uh, sometimes the town will take those vehicles and repurpose them for other departments. Other right. times, they're just so deficient and unreliable that we'll get some nominal amount back from the dealer when we do purchase our new vehicles. So it's really a, a conversation that we have with the highway department uh, about what vehicles are going to be rotated out of our fleet completely and where right. they're going to go. So that's kind of a little bit of a uh, explanation about that question. And uh, this slide kind of tells all, you can see the mileage forecast for uh, November 23, which will be you know, fiscal year 24. Um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 11, 12 vehicles that are gonna be um, more than 85,000 miles. So that if we replace uh, that six, and then we place two this fiscal year, um, that's going to dramatically increase the health of our fleet. So that, that's kind of why and we also lost a vehicle that was very reliable at Crown Victoria, unfortunately, to a motor vehicle accident that it's totaled. Um, but we did get money back from the insurance carrier, and uh, we're hoping to use that towards uh, some of the purchase, too. Right, right. Okay. Mike, as you know, it's, we have this discussion kind of every year, but it it sometimes gets lost in the discussion that a car may have 80,000 miles on it. And to us, I mean, I, I would, I've run my cars a lot longer, but these vehicles sit, you know, they'll rotate through per shift. So one car may run 24 hours a day and that engine is running 24 hours a day, I'm sure, as I'm sure you know. So while it only has say 85 or hundred thousand miles on it, in terms of hours on the engine, it could have you know, double that or triple that, right? Yeah, you know, actually, that's a fantastic point. As a matter of fact, you know, I represent a lot of car dealerships, and, and yeah. we get claims come in on the used cars where someone purchases and they find out, you know, like a boat engine. It has, like, massive yeah. amount of hours on it but doesn't have the mileage on it. So I think that's a really critical point to stress, uh, you know, in, in pushing for these vehicle replacements to say, look, you know, the, the, the mileage on the odometer is, isn't, you know, an accurate reflection of the, you know, uh, the vitality of the mechanical parts because of the hours of, you know, a, a car just sitting, you know, idle. So yeah, it's a really, that's a really important point to stress. Look, I've got a 65 Fleetwood, right? 1960, it's got 66,000 miles on it. All right. <laughs> yeah. 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 That no, I know. That's going to last a long time to my, you know, I guess what my wife wishes, but something like that, it sits in the garage all, you know, it's run every few weekends. Yeah. That's one thing, but you got a, a, you know, one of these interceptors, it'll go from, you know, the first shift to the second shift to the third shift and everybody likes the new ones. Right. So that's the car that gets picked first. And that's the car, you know, you want to drive every day on every shift. So they, they just get used as you can see, you know, and now we're kind of, a wall on a lot of these units because we you know, look we're in very cheap here um 
and frugal on on buying new cars. We probably should have been buying, you know, four and three, but we kind of did the, you know, at least three and three every year. But we've been doing two, three, two, three, and now it's kind of catching up to us. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, thanks. Oh, yeah. and the money for this is not coming. You know, Chief, explain where the money comes from. Is you know, this is this is this is a different pile of money as I see it, as opposed to you know, out of taxpayer money. Yeah, so so you know, Josh can elaborate more on that. But uh, for the past couple of years, I think uh, they've been relying on a revenue um, related to extra duty to fund some of the vehicle purchases. But I, I don't know what decision will be made about as to funding, whether it's going to be bonded or that line will be used. But um, I believe there's yeah, a I think we're I think we're still running a bit of analysis on the fund balance for extra duty before we kind of. Uh, can say with certainty if we're going to pay for you know some or all of of police's uh, capital projects out of that fund, but there I think there definitely will be some left. Obviously, uh, we haven't spent through all of it, and we've accumulated some and not transferred some to the general fund, so we still should have some remaining. Um, and we'll get you that kind of current fund balance, you know, within the next couple of days or so. Thank you. That's very Thank you. I think the logic would hold up, though. You know, if if we're getting extra duty, or you know, EverSource is paying into that fund, and that fund is paying for police cars to be out there, it should go back to that asset as opposed to going back to the general fund. I think so. Leon, I do have a question though. Did did you say the the license plate readers are leased? Well, it's. It's sort of a lease, right? It's a, uh, it's, it's not an outright purchase. Um, it is a, uh, so they're responsible for. We don't own the devices, so sure. it's, I guess you would say it's a lease, but not in a typical sense. Okay. Do you know who manages that, or if that's been like communicated with with Anne? I know we've been kind of uh, trying to consolidate a lot of the information regarding the leases that the town has um, for the audit that's that's kind of ongoing. And I'm not sure if this has been part of it, but we've kind of been discovering some as this budget process has been going on. Um, so I, I don't know if maybe you could forward some of that information to me or Anne tomorrow or in the next couple of days, um, if that hasn't been tracked. Yeah, sure, that'd be great. Yeah, glad to send cool. it. Yep, thanks. You're welcome. So operating summary now, uh, our request for FY24 is 7,091,306, overall 3.38% increase uh, compared to FY23, and uh, largely due to 2.50% contractual wage increase and other contractual increases, step increases specifically. We have a number of officers that have reached uh, five or six year plateau in their career where they are our maximum step, and that is driving the increase. And keep in mind that full-time salary line is roughly 76% uh, of our overall budget. So that's why you see um, that increase, which is larger than in typical years. So talk about staffing, which is connected to everything we do. Uh, currently eight sworn members are eligible to retire. Two officers have uh, entered the drop plan and will retire in FY24, one on July 30th, one on June 30th or July 1, and another officer has expressed desire to retire in FY24. <laughs> um, so that's going to really impact our staffing. That's why we need to keep uh, the pipeline as full as possible when we're able to hire the exceptional candidates uh, that we need to serve our town so well. Operating budget allows for best staffing, a complement of 47 sworn and uh, long hiring and training timelines. Uh, require us to fill those vacancies as soon as possible. Our present staffing levels, we have one, one officer at the police academy graduates, uh, in fact, Friday. Uh, one officer graduates mid-January 2023. They will then undergo three months of field training. Uh, we currently have one opening and we filled that opening tonight and two retirements which are certain through the drop plan and one retirement likely. Um, it's been noticed but not certain. And therefore, uh, we're, we're going to hopefully we get approval for that second hire tonight, um, as we talked about. Overtime, 
Uh, you can see top reasons for overtime. Uh, I like to see that it's training because that's always something we want to do and teach our officers to handle many critical situations exceptionally well. And uh, the rest of the uh, items are largely um, connected back to contractual obligations. And uh, that's kind of a, a pretty bulk of reasons that we're driving overtime so far this year. And our request for FY24 is 523, FY22 actual, which uh, I'm still evaluating. I think that's a little bit of a moving target is uh, 514,987. And we're forecasting about 534, which is which is under our, uh, our authorized amount. So pretty comfortable with overtime, current spending and that request. So that's a kind of a reader's digest version of the overall presentation that'll be done for all the boards formally. Um, you'll see more detail, more information, more photos and, and selling information, if you will, cost benefit analysis so that we can convey the message to our boards that what they get from this investment, which is a pretty exceptional police department that serves the town really well, does lots of great things throughout the year, engages really well with the community and uh, something we're really proud of. So, you know, the numbers are important, right? But we also need to look at the people and what they do for those numbers. So that's that's really important to me. And I think uh, our command staff and our whole department. So Chief, the... Um... The overall increase, uh, not inclusive of the you know the general wage increases and the labor contract cost, is just a little over one percent. Am I correct? Yep, that's right. Wow, that's great. Okay, yeah, we're pretty right, good. Okay. Yeah. Top, but what what was the guidance the board of finance gave you guys? Mm, we didn't get. I believe it, it was two seven five. <clears throat> okay, so great. Okay, um, but. Leon, did you, I'm sorry, Chief. Did you say you didn't get any? Uh, I'm not aware of guidance. Okay. So, yeah. so they, they published guidance um, or voted on guidance in the last meeting. But, I mean, truthfully, that was after the budgets have really been put together. Um, for the town, it was it was 275, I believe. All right. Okay. Well, PD is well under that. So that's that's sounds like we're in pretty good shape. Yeah, I mean, I mean, to Leon's credit, he put together a pretty tight budget. Other than just full time salaries and Social Security and just contractual obligations, it's 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 pretty flat. There's not much going on with it, really. Yeah, exactly. Right, and we'll just deal with the capital expenditures on the vehicles. That's the, that's their major cost, which those are those are requirements and must those are must happens as I call them. <laughs> Yeah, just a one, one last point to, about the operating budget. We did see some uh, increases that we could control related to gasoline, oil, um, and electricity and water and things like that, that we just can't control those costs. And everybody knows that they're, they're being driven up by various factors you know, throughout our nation. So, yeah. so ac across the departments, we put a pretty much just a 10% flat increase to all those utilities, at least as a placeholder until we we get a better picture of, of where things are headed, whether gas is going up or down. I think Bill and Tiger are kind of working on a presentation for Board of Finance next week uh, that kind of addresses some of those issues that we've bumped up against for this FY23 fiscally uh, this year and uh, what our plan is for next year as well. Great. Good. Well, I don't have any other questions, Chief. Thank you. That's it. All right. Um, any other business to discuss? Not here. Okay. All right. Motion to adjourn. So moved. I second. All right. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Josh. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye.